morning boys and girls uh, this is Karen Lee coming to you from my living room here in South Berwick uh, for another edition of Karen Read. it's good to see you this morning it's continued to be lovely out I hope you've been outside in the sunshine I know our two cats are loving it they love to be outside um, okay I have a book for you called Ms. Berlin Walks by Jane Yolen. Let me tell you about Jane. She's in her early 80s, one of our oldest writers so far. She's written almost three, uh, excuse me, almost 400 books. Um, she's also a poet and she writes songs. When she was a little girl, she wrote her first class musical, first grade class musical in which she was a chief carrot and all she and the other children who were vegetables ended up in a salad together by the end of the play. Um, her father was a journalist, her mother was a short story writer who also created, um, wrote uh, crossword puzzles. So she just assumed that all adults were writers and that that's what she would become. And her brother became a writer too. So um, a lot of people in her world are writers. Um, to get ideas, she asked herself the question, what if? She wrote one of her books that took her 20 years to write. One of them she wrote in three days. And her favorite food is chocolate cake. But if you want to know more about Jane, Jane Yolen, Y-O-L-E-N, go on to her website. It's a very interesting website with an interview with her. And she sounds like just a wonderful person. Our illustrator for this book is Floyd Cooper, one of our younger illustrators and the only black illustrator we've come across. I'm glad to present to you today a person of color. Um, he said, dream your own dreams and keep chasing after them. That's what he did and it worked for him. The first drawing he did was on the side of his house with a non-permanent marker when he was three. And that's how he got started. He said he is inspired by a librarian who told him that she, her biggest dream in life was to put a book about a white child in the hands of a black child and a book about a black child in the hands of a white child. So he strives to help people understand races of all kinds. He has a very unique process. He starts by washing the paper painting it um, or in some other way coloring it with the darker color and then using an eraser to eliminate the color to get to the more specific shapes that he wants. And his advice to you is to read and read and read everything you can get your hands on. Okay. Ms. Berlin Walks by Jane Yolen with illustrations by Floyd Cooper. Well, child, I recall once upon a time an old woman lived on our street. Oldest woman I'd ever seen. Her hair was white and fine, like the fluff off a dandelion. Her skin was the color of milk agate, like some marbles. But old she was, old as she was, Ms. Berlin sure could walk. Every evening, just before dark, she would pass by our house, going around the long block that takes more than an hour even if you go real fast. And Ms. Berlin, she went real slow.
On nice days, she wore a flowery cotton dress. On cool days, she wore a blue button coat. On rainy days, she carried a shiny black umbrella with long silver ribs. On hot days, she carried a paper fan. Oftentimes, she talked to herself or sang little songs. I couldn't tell which. Afraid to get too close, you see. Oh, lady like that, talking and singing to herself, Mama always said, a body can't be too careful. When Miss Berlin passed by, I watched her go all down the road in that unhurried way, talking or singing or in quiet contemplation. And then one hot summer evening, because I had nothing else to do, my best friend Francis Bird had gone visiting Kin in Roanoke. I jumped off the porch swing and ran right after Ms. Berlin. I expected her to yell scat or to put a curse on me or fix me with her eye. But all she did was walk on, nodding and talking to herself. She never once looked behind. Except when I got close up, she cleared her throat. And then, just as if we'd been conversing, she said, Well, child, I recall the time a rain feathered in, feathers in Newport News. I was a girl then, short and sassy, just like someone I could mention. I was wading in the creek, hunting crawdaddies with Bubba, when all about us, feathers began to fall. Some settled on the creek bank and some floated in the water, like boats setting off to Norfolk or Baltimore. I felt like I was right there on the bank in the creek. Then we reached the corner and she stopped to take a breath. I sighed and turned to go home. I wasn't yet allowed out of sight of our house. But off Miss Berlin went, still walking and talking up a storm. Of course, next evening, Right after supper, I waited the longest time, eating an ice cream on the porch. I was fixing to ask her what happened to those feathers, because I just had to know the way the story ended. The wind started up, brushing the treetops with a faint whist whist. And suddenly there she was, coming up the sidewalk, a paper fan in her hand. I slipped off the porch and followed her step for step. She seemed not to know I was there and started that story right where she had left off. Seems as though she doesn't know she was right there. She started right where she had left off. There was feathers to the right and feathers to the left, tickling my nose and falling on Bubba's head. I finished my ice cream and wiped my sticky hands on my sunflower suit. Without missing a step, without missing a word, Ms. Berlin reached back and grabbed hold of my hand. 
threading her fingers through mine. We walked side by side then, her telling more of the tale. So there I was in the creek, child. Some of those feathers, they were gray, and some were crow black, and some were dirty white, like seagulls after the swell. But one rained right into my hand, and it was all over gold. Just then we got to the block's end and I had to go home. No time for questions. No time for the end of the tale. Rules are rules, Mama says. Next evening, without even an ice cream, I waited on the porch. Didn't dare bounce my ball or skip rope for fear of missing her. And suddenly there she was, coming up the walk, holding her silver-ribbed umbrella high against the dark clouds. I ran up and touched her fingers. Was it an angel feather, I asked, scarcely able to breathe. Like as not, she said, for angels are partial to Newport News. We didn't say a word more, just walked along to the block's end, both of us under the black umbrella in the pattering rain. Some stories take you that way. Most evenings after that, I'd walk with Ms. Berlin, side by side, step by step, waiting cotton quiet till she cleared her throat. Cotton quiet, think of the cotton balls your mom has, um, and you know, the cotton quiet is very quiet. Or the cotton in your t-shirt, nice and soft and quiet. Then if she said, why Mary Louise? I smell the salt from the bay. I'd slip my hand into hers, and we'd talk of the sailing ships, cruisers on the Chesapeake, or pirate ships on the Spanish, Spanish main. Or if she said, why Mary Louise, I feel a soft summer breeze. We might speak of the hurricane of 48, when water lapped like wet tongues at the front steps of houses all the way to Kikuan Road, and the trees were bent near double. But if she said, well, child, I remember once upon a time, she'd tell a real whopper of a tale about Clever Jack or that bad girl with a mouth full of toads or the ghost that walked each night under the whispering trees. Of course, each story had to end at the corner of the block. I would run on home, stuffed full of tales, 
which I told over and over to my dolly before falling asleep in order to keep a hold of them. Then one evening in early March, it was a false spring when the blossoms on the trees were furled tight as a baby's fist. Ms. Berlin told me the story of her own coming into the world. It was a hard tale, full of hard scrabbled dirt, a two-room cabin, and a lot of hunger. I waited all the next evening for her to finish the story, only she never came. When I went down the block to where her house sat and up the walk the first time ever, the house was all dark and the blinds drawn down. I went back home and cried in my sleep, not knowing why. In the morning, my pillow was spotted and damp. Mama told me at breakfast, old Ms. Berlin had fallen down the stairs, snapped her hip in two. She was six weeks in the hospital. When she came back to her own house, she still couldn't walk. And she still couldn't talk either. I had to finish that story to my dolly the best way I could. Every evening after that, old Miss Berlin tried to rise out of bed and then cried because she couldn't manage. Least of ways, that's what her nurse said when Mama and I brought over one of Mama's famous strawberry apple pies. Miss Berlin up and died soon after, and I think I know why. Even good habits are hard to break. Hearts break so much easier. But evenings, right before dark, when the wind whispers kindly through the tall sycamores, Folks around here say, Ms. Berlin walks. And if you squint your eyes real hard, you may be able to see her in a flowery cotton dress carrying a silver ribbed umbrella, or if it's hot, a paper fan. And if you listen real hard, you might even hear her telling a block long tale about the time it rained feathers or the hard scrabble birth, or the one that starts. Well, child, I recall once upon a time, an old woman lived on our street, oldest woman I'd ever seen. Okay, beautiful book by Jane Yolen, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Let me tell you a little bit about what I, my plans are. Uh, next time I read, it'll be the longest book I've read to you called A Time of Wonder by Robert McCloskey. He wrote that book, um, Make Way for Ducklings, that we read a few weeks ago. He's, um, it's a, a Time of Wonder is my very favorite children's book. The one I give as gifts to all my friends who have children. Um, it's about children living on an island 
off the coast of Maine in the spring and summer. So I think you'll identify with it and love it. Um, and then, and then I know school will get out for you. And I've decided that I will continue reading through the summer as far as I can. I just have to have enough books and the library is opening up again, so I should be able to get more. So, okay, um, enjoy this beautiful weather. Do some reading and writing like our writers and illustrators encourage you to do. And I'll see you again next time. Take care, bye-bye.